In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a circle kinetic typography animation in After Effects without using a single plugin. Let's jump to the tutorial. Let's begin by creating a new composition. I'll name it Render, 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second and 10 seconds for the duration. Click OK. Then select the type tool and type a few words. I'm going to type creative motion graphics with the dash at the end, or you can call it a minus sign. After you type the text, hold Ctrl key and double click the pen behind tool to center the anchor point. Then open the align tab and align the text in the center. Then I'm going to switch back to the selection tool and simply click and drag the corner of the text holding the shift key to reduce the scale of the text so we can fit in the composition. After that, I'm going to select the shape tool, the ellipse tool. Make sure that the text is selected while you're doing this. And from the center of the composition, click and drag while holding Ctrl and Shift keys to get the proportional size of the ellipse. Then open the text properties, go to path options, click the drop down for path and select the mask one. Now the text is positioned on the mask that we've created. Then let's enable the reverse path. This will place the text on the outer circle as you can see. Now we can adjust the position or the alignment of the text using the character window and the font size specifically. As we start changing the font size, you can see the, the alignment changes. And try to make it somewhat symmetrical in this case, so this looks pretty good to me. Now we can animate the rotation of the text using the first or last margin settings, as you can see. So we're going to create the perfect seamless loop, as always. So I'm going to switch back to the selection tool, then uh, zoom in. And you need to find some sort of uh, like a point of reference, and I'll be using this dash or the minus sign as a point of reference. And I'll show you what I mean by this. So first, click on this button and enable the rulers. Then I'm going to zoom in on the dash. Then increase the first margin until the dash is sort of like horizontal to the composition. Then I'm going to drag the ruler down and place it on top of the dash. Then I'm going to zoom in again to be more precise. And adjust the first margin until it looks good. So something like this should look perfect. Also make sure that the ruler touches the exact edge of the dash. Then uh, create a keyframe for first margin at the beginning of the timeline. Then go to the end of the timeline. And here simply increase the first margin until we get one full rotation. Right, so keep increasing it. And here's the full rotation. We can see the point of reference, the dash. Let's uh, zoom in on it again. And adjust the first margin until we perfectly align it with the ruler. And if you follow the steps correctly, your start and end of the composition should look almost exactly the same. And here... This gives us the perfect loop opportunity. You can give it a quick preview and check out the loop. As you can see, it's pretty seamless. So now we can proceed to the next step. And that would be to rename the text to text with fill. Then make sure that the layer is selected. Go to edit, duplicate or press Ctrl D as a shortcut. And let's name this one text with stroke. Also give it a different color to better differentiate between them. Now make sure that the text with stroke is selected, then press S on the keyboard and decrease the scale to something like this. Then navigate to the character window and click on these arrows to swap fill and stroke. And now we have a pretty nice contrast between the fill text and the stroke text. So the idea here is that the fill text will move clockwise and the stroke text will move counterclockwise. So move to the beginning of the timeline, select the text with stroke and press U to see the keyframes. Uh, click on the stopwatch to remove the keyframes and we're going to do the same thing with the, with the fill text but this time I'm going to place the dash at the bottom just to create some variation. So let's increase the first margin until the dash is at the bottom. Again I'm going to zoom in on it, further adjust the first margin until the dash stands horizontal and then drag the ruler until it touches the bottom edge of the dash and that should be pretty good. Then create a keyframe. Go to the end of the timeline and do the same thing, but uh, decrease the first margin so it goes counterclockwise. So keep decreasing it. And as you're approaching the one full rotation, zoom in on the dash and align it to the ruler that we've placed. And once you've done those steps, the hardest part is complete and the base of the animation is ready. So now we can remove the rulers and the guides. We don't need to see them anymore. I suggest you close down the drop downs or the layers to give ourselves some room. And at this point, it's just a matter of duplicating the layers and changing their scale. So let's select the text with fill layer and press Ctrl D to duplicate it. 
and then simply decrease its uh, scale, dragging on the corner, holding shift so you get the proportional scale. And there is no right way of doing this, just eyeball it and place the layers wherever you see fit. Do the same with a, a text with a stroke, and you get the idea, just keep on doing this until you, you have an entire composition filled with the text layers. And once you've done the process, you can select all layers, right click any of them and select recompose. So let's call this one text, then click OK. And now we can start adding cool effects on top of the animation. First, let's create a background, go to layer new solid. And let's name this one BG, make the color pure black. Click OK and place it below the composition. Now let's create an adjustment layer by going to layer new adjustment layer. Now open the effects and presets window and search for tint and add it to the adjustment layer. This is so that you can easily change color of the text as well as the background. So if you want to change the color of the text, just map white to any color of your choice. As you can see, pretty simple. For the background though, map black to any color of your choice. Again, you're free to use any colors if you want. So I'm going to choose the dark gray. The next effect on the list is the glow. So search for glow, stylized glow, add it to the adjustment layer. Increase the glow radius to 20, just slightly increase it. Then search for noise. Also add it to the adjustment layer. Set amount of noise to 10%, uncheck use color noise, and this will help blend everything together. Then I'm going to create another adjustment layer. Go to layer, new adjustment layer. Then go to effects and presets and search for vignette. Add a CC vignette to the second adjustment layer and set amount to 50% just to darken out the, the corners and the edges of the composition. We're also going to darken out the center of the composition. So go to layer new solid. Let's call this one blur. Again, color black, click OK. And place it below the adjustment layers and above the, the text composition. Make sure that the blur solid layer is selected, then select the ellipse tool. And from the center of the composition, click and drag holding control and shift keys to create a mask like this. Then uh, press F on the keyboard to bring up mask feather and increase the feather somewhat high until you kind of darken out the center of the composition. And this will add a slight depth to the scene. And at this point, the animation is complete. Let's go ahead and preview it. As you can see, it turned out pretty cool. Also, the tutorial is complete. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.